the name of the show is The Way to Go. My name is Alan Bendich. I'm going to be your host. And tonight's guest is, guess who? Max Bendich. Hey, well, Pop. Hi, Alan. How are you doing? Good. Excellent. Nice. So, uh, yeah, so we, uh, today was a, Today was rough getting to uh, to the studio, wasn't it? I mean, it's crazy. Friday night, first of all, yeah. summer is over. Right. And autumn is supposed to Well, first to of all, you know, we're shooting this on a Friday night. You'll be seeing this on a Wednesday night, folks. But anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, but that's okay. No, mm. not, and the traffic is heavy. Right. And I'm <coughs> telling you, how we squeezed out right. here and how we, but we finally got here around. Well, you know what happened? Uh, basically, I left work early today. And we're going along well. Wendy came to pick you up. My mm. wife, Wendy, came to pick you up. Everything was going smoothly. And all of a sudden, they unload everybody from my train. A, a tree fell on the tracks at Baychester Avenue. So they say, I'm sorry, you got to take the White Plains Road train. But mm. that goes to a totally different place. So Wendy wound up picking you up. And then after that, came to pick me up on Gun Hill and White Plains Road. And I was thinking, oh, my God, you know. But it worked out. You know, I, I, I'm a worry wart. You're not. Know, you, you're calm. Yeah. Wendy was calm about the whole thing, too. And thank God LMC TV was uh, nice enough to hold the studio for us to do this. So, anyway, that was fun, right? Yeah. If you call that fun, <laughs> <laughs> what, what tragedy? <laughs> yeah. So, it's good. So, um, so tonight, tonight I'm shooting two episodes mm -hmm. of The Way to Go With You. Um, tomorrow, I'm filming a karate movie. And Sunday we're doing scriptless, uh, a, a short film, a scriptless short film, and you're in it. All right. Are you excited about it? I mean, always. Uh, yeah. Why? Because it's something different. Right. And I look forward to it. And all of a sudden I'm there, and that is the whole thing. All of a sudden I'm there, and I never, you know, it's a different kind of a life, Alan. That I, I never knew that. And uh, yeah, but and I'm you do happy. a good job. And, uh, and I'm happy. I'm it, happy that I'm doing it. I'm with younger people. Right. Everybody's younger well, than me. That's true. Everybody in the world is younger than you, <laughs> almost. There's only like a few people older than you. Everybody's right. younger than me. Yeah. And I tell them, look, please, keep on going as you're going because <laughs> I'm after you. That's it. So the, the movie we're doing, we've done two uh, films already, and you're already in the two of the short films. The first one was called Waiting. And basically, you play a guy, uh, my father, who's passing away, and you actually pass away in that. I, oh, that's, I shouldn't have said anything because some people might not have seen it. The second one we did was called Intervention, and you were in it also with a bunch of people, and they were, you know, they were trying to make me a better human being. And, <laughs> and this one is called Men of a Certain Age, and it's basically about you know, people who are like in their 50s and higher. Um, and... And one, one person in particular has, has just lost his wife. So they're trying to, uh, and he's, he's, you know, like, a lot of times when people pass away in, in couples, mm -hmm. the next one, you know, passes away soon, or at least, you know, it could be a lot of depression. So his buddies tried to get him not to be depressed, and I won't go any further than that, but you're in that movie too. So everything I do, I try to make you a part of. And, well, uh, thank you. I hope I succeed in making you feel well. Thankful that I'm but, thankful. Right, to but you. but to me it's just the opposite. I hope you're having a good time doing it. That's uh, the whole thing. Alan, I'm with you. Yes. I am having a good time. Any time of the day, I'm having a good time. Alan. Yeah, that's it. And so and then another, you know, I did this movie that was called Dharma Nine, and it was a it was a karate film. And I'll tell you, I went, to, I did the film, and I played a dual role. I had like a secret identity. And I was like a martial artist in the movie. And believe me, I'm not a martial artist. But with, uh, with the help of the filmmaker, Alberto Martinez, uh, we actually made an interesting film. And it was good. And uh, the teaser for that film, the trailer actually, uh, became something that, the, that Aaron, my son, your grandson, uh, introduced to everyone up at Vassar when he was, mm -hmm. when he was still, before he graduated. So everyone was like uh, quoting lines from the uh, from the uh, trailer oh, then, and all this stuff. There it is. A little little publicity right. becomes a little more and a little more. And then we actually had the premiere at Vassar, and I did a Q and A question question and answer period with the students. We had like forty or fifty people watching the film, and it was great. And then 
Alan decided to do his thesis on, because he, he majored both in film and in, uh, in computer science. So the thesis portion for film he did on Alberto Martinez, the filmmaker. So Alberto this week got in touch with me and he said he wants you to be in, he wants the honor of having you in his film. So uh, I right. said yes already. Well, look, if one, if one, look, it's an honor. I try to be honorable to him. Oh, you will, I'm sure. He, I mean, he is so excited that I said yes. And Aaron is too, because Aaron is a big fan, my son Aaron. And uh, so three generations are going to be working with the filmmaker, Alberto Martinez. So it's, uh, it's great. Well, I'm getting to know people who I never knew, uh, impossible to d even to dream about it. But now it's almost normal. Right. I mean, they, I mean, this type of an environment, and Alan, I love that environment. And it's getting better. No kidding. It's getting better. Oh, it is. You're doing, I mean, you're more comfortable. I'll put it this way. The only reason why it's getting better is because you're more comfortable. I mean, the more I, comfortable you get, the better you are. Because it's a matter of just really, you're relaxed in the atmosphere. And that, Acting is that either you're going to be stressful right. or you're going to be re relaxed. Right. I am the relaxing type. And you are. I, again, I take in everything that I'm talking about. I don't get angry. Right. I don't do this. Why? Because I'm an, uh, oh, where I am, Alan, yes. up in Kate House, yes. what do I do? I talk to him about that. And listen, I'm an optimist. Right. Please be an optimist. You have to be an optimist in this world and blah, blah. And, uh, and one person tells him, you see the guy, he wants me to be. <laughs> I'm, two guys come over, you know you, you told someone you want, uh, you want him to be an optimist? Right. And they talk about things like that. That's great. And I'm open, I'm open about it. Why I'm dealing uh, and so far about it, who do I talk to? Right. Younger, even though it's younger, I mean, 10 years younger, right. it's still younger than. Absolutely. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if it's episode three of Scriptless MD, which is another show that we work on mm -hmm. all the time, or episode four, but you say one of the lines, which is great, you say, you know, and I'll be honest, I like women. And you, the way you said that, it was like, <laughs> I said, oh, dad. Oh, oh. It, it was a great line. It was a great line. But, I tell that to most of the people. Right. Again, why? We were in the yellow, usually we're in an elevator, Alan. Right. Five women and me. And I tell the person, go slow. <laughs> what, where are you rushing? I, the odds are now five and one on you, for me. <laughs> and they, they, they all laugh and they, right. they, they, and I'm like that. Right. Alan, really, I am really like So I really think, like the short film that we're going to do, because it's scriptless and most of the actors, actors and actresses I've worked with, there's going to be two new people who I haven't worked with yet, two, two ladies who are going to be on the show. I figure we'll, fi we'll finish that, because it usually takes about four hours for us to do mm -hmm. our little scriptless short films. Um, then we're going to do some more scenes for scriptless MD. Even though we wrapped it, uh, you're not in some of the episodes. So one of the things in scriptless episode two that you did or episode one, I can't remember, it might have been episode one, was um, Jim, who plays Dr. Kazak, or uh, K Dr. Kazak, played by Jim, mm -hmm. comes, to, c comes to you, and because he thinks you're depressed, you know? And um, instead of, but I, basically I told you before that really I think he needs help and that you could help him. Mm -hmm. So he comes in as a psychiatrist to, to help you, and he, you wind up with, with the uh, pad, uh, uh, asking him, so tell me about yourself. So, uh, and, um, so we're gonna, we might do more sessions of you giving therapy to him, even though he's, he, uh, he's, the, he's the therapist. And, um, and it works. It worked. It was, that was one of the funniest scenes <laughs> in the show yeah. so far. It but worked. we have some of the episodes that are coming up, even though we, we've shot all the episodes of Scriptless MD, we're only up to editing, I think, episode four at this point. Uh, but that, up to, up to episode four, that is the funniest scene I think we have in the entire show. Uh -huh. And you nailed it. You did a great uh -huh. job. And Alan, I loved it. Uh, only for one reason. Yeah. I never expected it. Right. Alan, I never. But I you went like this. You go like this and then you cross your leg. And I can't do it because my leg hurts a little bit. And then you have the pad like this and you say, so tell me about yourself. And it was like, <laughs> it worked. It worked so, it was so smooth. It was, and um, a matter of fact, people, uh, posted 
how much they liked it on Facebook about that one scene. They, they were, you know, LOL, uh, laughing out loud from it. So they really enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, and explain that to me. I yes. Mean, that they, uh, yeah. they watched I, it, right? The, the people and then they watch. said, And then they posted on Facebook saying, I love the scene where your father starts doing the therapy for Dr. Kazak. No, and that's it. <laughs> they are watching it just to write down these things? No, no, they're no. watching it, but then all of a sudden it's funny. Oh, that's so what they I, want that's to say. To, they, so they want to, uh, they're, they're giving they're, appreciation to the show. Uh -huh. They're saying, wow, you know, it was really, I mean, they started laughing, you know? So it's supposed to be a comedy, so if they laugh, it's a good thing. You know? it's, <laughs> if, if they're not laughing, then it's not a good thing. But you should see some of these, some of the episodes that are coming up. I mean, the, the, there's one actress, and I'm trying to get her to play your daughter in a laundromat because we're filming a movie about, we're still filming it, <coughs> about when you got shot. So I'm trying to get this one actress to play Mimi, right? But uh, because it's scriptless and we're no, we have no budget, she asked the question, so what's the compensation? And I always hate that question because right now we do it on a zero budget, you know? So, and, and one day, one day who knows? Hopeful. That's it, but right now, and I hate to say, you know, I hate to say it because I know she wants, she deserves, everyone deserves to get paid. That's right. But if there's no budget, there's no budget, you know what I mean? So, uh, but that's it. But it's amazing what we could do with the help of, LMC TV and the equipment and things like that, and the people and, and, the, the, volunteer, people, right. and the volunteers. Uh, it's just amazing if you have an idea and people go along with it. The funny thing is, I think almost any story could be made into either a short film or a episodic, a episodic, uh, an episode of TV. And, uh, and that's one thing I'm finding. You know, I'll come up with an idea. And sometimes I'm not even sure if it's going to be that good, but I come up with it. And then I start, you know, I start second guessing myself and then all of a sudden everyone says that was the best show we had you know, no, but, I mean, wait a minute <laughs> plus after what you're just saying yeah. but then little by little the people themselves come in right and build it up right, that because they, they're making maybe, a story maybe you never expected it right and uh, right because they change it i come up with a premise yes but because it's scriptless, That's right. the whole thing is a premise the whole thing's it? scriptless that yeah. all of a sudden i'm working with creative people and they just embellish it and switch it a little bit. Sometimes I switch it a lot and it's good. Sometimes I switch it too much and I say cut and we start all over again. But, um, but I love it. I, I, there's nothing in life that makes me as happy. And it's a terrible thing to say because I got kids, I got married. But the thing that makes, gives me pure pleasure is a scene that works. I know, Alan, I know. Why? Because it's yours. But even even it's when yours. I'm just even when I'm just acting, even if it wasn't mine. In other words, if I'm in a scene as an actor, and I know I nailed it, that's a feeling that I can't. You know, there's no other feeling mm -hmm. like it. And it doesn't happen as often as I'd like. But nailing a scene and knowing it is like the greatest feeling. I don't know. And you've done it. You've done it several times. I was looking at your your um, the dancing movie you did. You know. Uh, and I was watching it, you know, and it was so, where they go from the kids to the middle, Maybe. you know, to younger people and then to the older people and then your wife leaves you. That's right. She, you know, she's gone. And I, 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 it's I'm, simple I, and beautiful. I'm, I'm not kidding you, Alan. Yes. People, are, all right, I think I know everybody in Kate. I, 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 I've been there long enough, I mean. There right. Was, and now we have the nuns. Right. I'm getting, and I, I have one, there's one nun on me. Together Your with pals, that, I know. Pals. So here we have uh, everything going, everything good. To me, it's normal. Right. It's a normal thing. I'm only living in a, a different life meaning. Right. And I'm, not, I'm feeling good about it. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the people who see me, Alan, what do they call me? Mr. Life is good. Mr. Life is good. And they also call you Mr. Actor. No, the, well, the actor is something else. And, my, and I kid around. All you guys are younger than I am, so forget about it. <laughs> but you know, you know what come, one thing about Facebook, which is interesting, is that on anniversaries, they, they give you like memories of what happened a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. And one thing that happened this week was uh, you were in the, uh, the Daily News, I think, or the yes. Post, 
and a big picture and all this. And they had it, and I posted it on Facebook. And this it happened this week, two years ago, mm -hmm. when you were 99 years old. So it was, uh, it was good. So I reposted it and I shared it with people, and everyone said, Max is the greatest. And, and blah, if you blah, noticed blah. on that picture, who was the biggest picture? Me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, no, this one was only you. This, this wasn't the, the this wasn't the kissing oh, oh, one. This, this is the one that they came in and interviewed you alone. Alone. And oh. it said something about uh, it was about your acting, and mm -hmm. you talked about scriptless. You talked about the way to go. I don't know if you talked about the way to go, but you talked about scriptless. So far, Alan. Yes. As far as I know, all you want me to do is to talk about scriptless. No, and the way to go. Uh, 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 this show. This is right. I know it, but so I concentrate on that. Right. And I, uh, in other words, I, I tell people about it. Right. And well, a lot of people know about it, and we're going to have a we're having our. I mean, this will be shown. Well, depending. I mean, it might come out, but we're going to have a party finally. We had one party for a movie that we made, which was the first one, which was Waiting, the first um, short film. But now we're having a wrap party, which is the finish, you know, like when you wrap up, it's all mm -hmm. finished for Scriptless MD, and that's next Friday, and I'm excited about it. And uh, we have people from LMC coming, which is exciting. And uh, That's right, they're important, more important than the actors. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> really? And, uh, you know, some of the actors, we have other, we have, you know, casting directors that are going to be there. And, and um, actually, there should be two casting directors. So. Um, We'll have JT and I think uh, Baruch Santana is going to be there. It should be interesting. It's, uh, I hope there's a large turnout. So far, only 17 people, but it, a, lot, a lot of people didn't see the invitation. I put it up today, and only 17 people or 18 people said they're coming. But a lot of the cast ha haven't uh, responded yet. I'm sure the cast will be there. So I'm excited. It'll be fun. Where, where is it going to be? It's going to be at uh, something, I, I forgot the name of it, but it's on 57th Street on the east side in Manhattan. It's a nice place. No, well, beautiful. Nice na a beautiful neighborhood. Oh, right, 57th, 57th Street. 57th Street. That's it. That's like, uh, that's where... Uh, How about Carnegie? It's that's Car it. That's where Carnegie Hall is, exactly. <laughs> I, used to work at, I used to work at 9 West 57th Street when I worked for Sony, and it's beautiful. I mean, the amount of stars that go up and down that block, unbelievable. Right near Tiffany's, all that stuff. It's beautiful. And Trump Tower. What can you do? I know what can you do. All right, look. That's it. <laughs> but Carnegie Hall. That's it. But that's on the west side. This, the party is going to be on the east side. And it's, uh, it'll be nice. Most of my work, you know, with a, with a lawn, I was only on the west side. I know. I know, really. I had a few of them on the east side on Park Hill, but I couldn't hold them. First of all, I didn't. There were some old customers. Right. And I'd have to go out of the way. And you have to wear a suit and tie to go into some of those buildings. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but um, no, it's it's interesting. I mean, you had your you had your uh, your celebrity uh, customers. You had Yul Brenner, you had Martha Schlamm, you had uh, I had wait, Lena Horn. I was going to say Lena Horn, and she was married to this violinist. I forget the, the, right. the, the, the man's name. Right. And. No, nothing. I mean, I, I would no, Lena Horn. She was beautiful. Beautiful lady. Beautiful lady. And you know, I was watching. They have uh, Dick Cavett used to be a talk show host, and he interviewed tons of people, including Lena Horn, and back in the 1970s. And I was looking at her, and she was probably in her 50s or uh, maybe close to 60. She was still gorgeous back then. Beautiful. She lived on 81st Street, and Park uh, and uh, uh, River and uh, Central Park West. Yeah. And uh, Do you, and did she give you lots of laundry or how did no, it? No, it was a media, a small bun, a, a small bundle. A small bundle. A normal. A, a bundle. Was there a doorman at the? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, definitely. So, so, first of all, forget about the doorman. You don't go in with the doorman. Yeah. You go on the side. You go down but, where the where the help. Uh, uh, there's a name for it. Right. I don't remember. Oh yeah, the service entrance. It's a service entrance. So were you? But you'd go upstairs and you'd meet, be see her. Naturally. I mean, was uh, she uh, was she nice? <laughs> And I, I, you know where I, I met quite quite a few in Harlem, in, in Lenox Terrace. Yeah. And there, I, I. There were a lot of people. We used to see Percy Sutton. We saw. Oh, I, I remember he was the borough president Percy, of Manhattan. He was sweet. He was a nice guy. But. Hal Jackson, who was the. Um, but now comes something else. Yes. We don't talk about it at all. Bumpy right. John. Uh, Bumpy. But, Bucky, uh, Bumpy. Uh, uh, Bumpy Johnson. Bumpy Johnson. No, Bumpy. You know what? And actually, there was a movie with um, 
now I can't think of the actor's name, but it was called the Gang uh, American Gangster. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the characters was Bumpy Johnson. They, it was like a biopic. But, believe it or not, yeah. Bumpy Johnson was married. I know. And who was his be a good friend of his? Mom. Uh, and, but you were, her, were uh, weren't no, you Bumpy Johnson's uh, uh, laundryman? The uh, yeah, the no, I, Mom, because of, right. because of me. Right. And I, I don't know how Mom came into it. Right. And they became, really, they became good friends. Right. And they would call up each other and yell up each other. But he was, he was, uh, he was a very famous man. He was, uh, yes. That's it. Uh, you know, you know, this, he took, he had a, he, he had a be, he was a gangster and right. everything. And they had to have a gangster to be caught for real. So they caught him. And he said, you're going to, they, they went over, you're going to be the one. But okay. we take care of your family. Yeah. And, and that's what happened. Right. But, but, I, but is it true? Because I, I remember they showed in the, uh, in the American Gangster that he used to give turkeys out and things like this to people on Thanksgiving or Christmas that. or something like that. Was, I mean, was he good to his community or was he a gangster to his community? That's the question. Uh, Who knows? And that's right. I, I, I don't know. But he wasn't a gangster to Wait you. Wait a minute. And I had somebody else. Who? To me, he was a miserable guy. Who? And to the black people, he was a god almost. Yeah. Uh, he used to be a paper yeah. called Mohammed Speak. Right. Mohammed Speak. Right. And he was almost like the son of Mohammed. He oh, wasn't. Really? He, he was, all, he was he a was a, Oh. He was, a, he was a big man. Right. And okay, so, now I remember the, I know the, I newspaper, forget, I I know the newspa the, newspaper you're talking about. It wasn't Farrakhan. <laughs> no. no. But, uh, interesting. But, uh, yeah. People knew me, Alan, and people liked me. And that is the whole thing. People liked me. And they liked, and they liked their, your sons, too, because David and I, oh, my, they, the, we used to deliver laundry. Oh, and definitely. Right. So they didn't like me. <laughs> they, they, they liked no, me. they liked you. I remember. <laughs> and they felt comfortable with you. I mean. That, that's right. Now, they're, they're oh, with, with Bumpy Johnson, definitely. Right. So just imagine his wife, mom. Right. You know who else? Mom had a, a, a beautiful relationship. Uh, Paul Robson's wife. Paul Robson's wife. I know. Paul Robson's wife. She married, but she would come over. She I know. came over to our house on 528. Right. And uh, or maybe in, this was already maybe on. Uh, uh, we lived near Cypress Avenue. Right. What, what, what other, I don't remember. Yeah, with a book signed by her. I know. But made out to Helen. Helen. I know. <laughs> and when you say mom, you're talking about your mother, yes. Ellen, Ellen Bendich. Ellen yeah. Bendich. That's it. And how? How she ever became involved with, I don't remember. I, I, don't, I don't know either. But all I know is, you know, she was the, the wife of a great man. No, I mean, Paul Robeson. He was an unbelievable man, right? And uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's history, you know? It's, it, it makes us who we are. By luck. Yes. Know, it's, it's, it's luck. Whatever happened to me right. was good. Right. At the moment that it happened, really, right. if it happened a year or two later or a two year or two, but just when it happened, right. and why? Because it fell into whatever was happening, and how, how I was living at that time. Right. And uh, but uh, we met we met a lot of famous. I mean, I just remember and, and access I, to Pete Seeger, access to uh, all kinds of people. I mean, his no, wife, Tasha. And, uh, again, and I'm the type of guy yeah. who, uh, again, like my mother. My mother used to write uh, like Russian novels, right. you know, uh, the love stories. But right. I, no, there's a name for it. Right, you, I know what you're talking about. Uh, right. Uh, and a new one would come out, and she would say, Mac, listen to the Maxilla. <laughs> listen to this. And she'd say, and I'm looking at her, and look what, you know what that means? And Do you remember? Well, I'll put it, I mean. Life wasn't good at that time. You obviously I, remember your parents. Do you, you, you remember your grandmother, right? Uh, no. Well, my grandmother was a little lady, right. you know, and believe it or not, what made her that she was mugged, Alan. I know. And she was she she came from Russia. She was my father's uh, mother, right. and uh, her husband was my, killed. Her husband was, was killed. killed. He was hiding in a right. in a haystack, and he was killed. And he was killed. But all right, it happened. But and one thing was good about. 
for us compared, we had nothing to do with the Holocaust. Right. I wait, except, wait, wait. Except for Sam. Except with Sam. My, our bro my brother-in-law, uh, yeah. your son-in-law. Uh, right. He, uh, with Sam, he was born. He was born in Germany. In, in, in the mountains. He was right. born as, with the partisans. Right. But for us and our family, mm -hmm. we, we, we came at the right time. Thank God. Uh, yes. It's, or whatever. Thank uh, whatever. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, look, so when uh, Alan, yeah. I don't think I ever regretted anything in my whole, again, right. in my whole life. I hope you don't regret uh, the scriptless. <laughs> <laughs> in, my, in my whole life. Right. Because, and, and I, it, was, it was a gradual, I, I don't know if you really, it was a gradual change, right. mostly a little better, a little better. Right. I don't think it ever came down to a, it did it, well, you, you should remember right. a lot. Did it, instead of, did it ever actually go down? I mean, well, it went down a little bit after he got shot. I mean, well, but, well, after but, he got shot, everything went down. But, but uh, you were able to gather yourself after that, and life went on. And life went whole, on, yeah. That's right. the whole thing. But the and, shot thing, that was a rough thing. That was rough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, um, yeah. again, I tell you, I, I, I tell that. But when I looked out of that window and I saw people walking around and I could have been dead, I know. that was, uh, uh, forget about it. it. It's weird, right? It, I mean, it, no, that, Alan, for a long time, uh, uh, that's a good word. Yeah. It, uh, I felt weird. But you know what, even today, even when I got stuck on the, on the uh, train today because of the, the tree on the tracks, yeah. I was thinking, because there's a song that Carly Simon sings, and it's called These Are the Good Old Days. And you know, as bad as things are, when you look back, you don't remember really the bad stuff. You usually remember the good stuff. And you know, I'm thinking, you know, even with all the crap that's going on in the world today, when I look back, I'm sure I'm gonna say that, you know, these were the good old days, you know. I mean I had I had you, I had I had uh, you know, Aaron and Kara and all this stuff, and these are things that uh, I'm looking forward to. So and what a, look, so if that's the case, yeah. if we had it at that time, we know the next hundred years yeah. <laughs> are going to be about the same thing. That's all. Yeah. Uh, little by little, I'll we'll be doing this and be doing that. Right. And Alan, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Alan. Um, well, that's, you're you, welcome. You went over to me and said, you want to do it. And I said. Well, I did this whole thing for you to do it. That's uh -huh. the whole th I mean, at least for this show. But also, I asked you if you wanted to. Uh, no, I, I started no, scriptless from the beginning, you yeah. know, and I said, uh, even when we were in Hollywood, you did uh, it, you know. Oh, I mean, right. but it wasn't the same extent. But in Hollywood, you did it too, even though it was like these big shows. You're doing much more now, but and on that note, even though you're doing much more now, there's only one thing left to say. That's a wrap. Good night, folks. <laughs>